And that's kind of how this happened. I was, uh, you know, here I am, you know, it's like eight, nine o'clock at night talking to a patient about my life and how I'm not sure that I made the right decision. And, you know, I'm a nurse because my parents really wanted me to be a doctor. And I just, you know, it was like, I don't know if I could do this or not. So I decided, let me be a nurse. Um, and I wasn't sure I had my daughter at the time, um, you know, she was still a baby and I was working night shifts and then going home to take care of a, you know, of a little girl. And so, um, also going through like a rough personal patch there. I wasn't sure if I was, uh, wanting to continue being married. And so I just like pour my heart out to this patient. Oh man. And she's like, do you realize I'm dying from cancer? And I was like, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. This must sound like so lame. And she's like, no, no, I love your stories, but I'm going to tell you this. Life is so short that you need to put on your big girl pants and decide I either want to do this for the rest of my life or I don't. And if the answer is no, you're young enough where you can like restart. restart. Welcome to the rock stars rocking podcast powered by voluntary disruption a show dedicated to people who are crushing their business and life goals. These are bite-sized conversations with leading rock stars in their respective industry who are pumped to share their story to help drive you to the next level. So, are you ready to rock? Speaking of rock stars, here's your host, Eric Silverman. Hey, rock stars, welcome back to another episode of Rock Stars Rockin', where you know it. Come on, you know it. If you're listening, you know it. I only have the most rockin' rock stars each and every week uh, ready to uh, divulge all their industry secrets and, and tradecraft and all the reasons they're so successful. And uh, this week is going to be no different. I'm super fired up and excited to introduce you to my new good friend, Elsa Glorioso, the Vice President of Insurance Services at People Strategy out of the greater Northern Virginia, D.C. metro area. Uh, hey, Elsa, thank you for coming on the show. Welcome. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. I got to kick this off with the most incredible, fascinating uh, news ever. And that is, uh, for those that don't know Elsa yet, and uh, you will know her very soon, I promise, not just from this podcast, but from uh, her taking over the benefits industry all across the country, no doubt. Uh, Elsa was just recognized uh, in Benefits Pro Magazine, uh, which for those listening, I assume you've got to already know what that is. Benefits Pro is the, uh, uh, I assume it's the number one, at least in the top two magazines in our industry, year in and year out for the insurance and employee benefits world. And Elsa is a top five finalist for the Benefits Broker of the Year. Um, and for those listening, let me just give you an example. There are so many tens of thousands of brokers and advisors and consultants out there that, uh, that Elsa would be potentially competing with. And it was narrowed down to five of the best, the best of the best. And Elsa has that honor. She's currently on the cover of Benefits Pro Magazine. If you're watching on YouTube, I would love to hold up the magazine article in front of me. I don't have it yet. So Paul Wilson, Editor-in-Chief of Benefits Pro, you're awesome. But where's my copy, Paul? You're killing me. Uh, so Elsa, congratulations publicly by all means. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So Elsa, let's talk about it. I want to talk about what you believe earns you that status, that opportunity, right? Um, what have you been doing in the benefit space? Where did you come from? Where are you going? Uh, what, what do you think is it that made you so unique and amazing that Paul and his staff of writers decided to put you on that top five list? And, and if you don't mind, maybe start with your background because it's a little bit different. I don't meet too many brokers and advisors in the country who have a medical uh, nursing background. Can you start there? Yeah, sure. So that's actually where all of this started. Um, I was a frustrated nurse, I guess. I love nursing and to all my um, nurse peeps, I love you guys. Thank you for everything that you do. Um, but I was an oncology nurse. I was part of the bone marrow transplant team. And, um, you know, a lot of oncology nurses will tell you the hardest part of nursing is obviously the emotional toll it takes because you develop this friendship with your patients. 
And that's kind of how this happened. I was, uh, you know, here I am, you know, it's like eight, nine o'clock at night talking to a patient about my life and how I'm not sure that I made the right decision. And, you know, I'm a nurse because my parents really wanted me to be a doctor. And I just, you know, it was like, I don't know if I could do this or not. So I decided, let me be a nurse. Um, and I wasn't sure I had my daughter at the time, um, you know, she's still a baby and I was working night shifts and then going home to take care of a, you know, of a little girl. And so, um, also going through like a rough personal patch there. I wasn't sure if I was, uh, wanting to continue being married and so I just like pour my heart out to this patient oh man and she's like do you realize I'm dying from cancer and I was like yeah you're right I'm sorry this must sound like so lame and she's like no no I love your stories but I'm going to tell you this life is so short that you need to put on your big girl pants and decide I either want to do this for the rest of my life or I don't and if the answer is no you're young enough where you can like restart, reset. And so that's kind of how it happened. She worked for a bank and I went to work for the bank. And then that bank had a huge insurance division as well. Um, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, time out. So yeah. this cancer patient is the whole reason, and I hope she's okay, but that she's the whole yeah. reason you ended up in the insurance world because she happened to work at a bank that had an insurance division. Is it, did I hear that right? Kind of, sort of, yeah. So she like that, offered, that's crazy. yeah. So she offered me a role on the banking side. Um, and the at that time, I'm probably going to age myself here. <laughs> Remember when banks used to close at like two, three o'clock in the afternoon, sure. and that was that's like where the expression hours? "bankers hours" came from. Exactly. Well, not anymore. But um, so she, you know, she was like, "Look, if you, you know, want to start over, you can work at the bank. You can pick up your daughter from school, you know, or kindergarten, daycare, wherever." Um. It, it'll just be great, right? And it'll allow you to meet, network a lot of people and just kind of figure out what you want to do. The whole, you know, the, the hold up there was that she was also on FMLA trying to beat cancer. And so, sure. you know, I was like, ah, I don't really know if I want to work for a bank, but I'll think about it. Um, and we kept in touch uh, for, you know, for about a year until one day I just decided, you know what, I'm, I don't know, what do I got to lose? I'm going to call this lady up and see if like she was being serious right. and she's going to, you know, help me get a job. And she did, she helped me get a job, um, at a bank. And, um, I didn't realize at the time, like the magnitude or the size of that bank. And then, um, she put me with somebody who was, is an amazing mentor um, and really was like a personal therapist and, um, you know, professional coach. And she really set me up for success too. You know, she told me from the get-go, I, I would keep you here forever, but I would not be a good leader if I did. And she put me in front of the commercial team. The commercial team then led to a huge win that uh, the bank had been chasing for a long time which then led to me being introduced to the insurance services division. And, uh, and then there, I was also blessed with a amazing mentor manager, uh, Marcus Stevens, who took a absolute blind shot on me and said, you're a nurse. Like you can figure out how to get licensed. You can figure this out. Clearly you got the sales thing down. Just, you know, like, let's do this together. And, um, and he really did. I mean, he he did an amazing job of training me in my first year um, and allowed me the opportunity just to learn the entire benefit space. Whoa, um, that's cool. Yeah. And and he made me, he, you know, I had to be an account manager for a few months, an account executive. I had to um, you know, work my way not up to a producer because I, I was hired as a producer, but just learn like the ropes. From the inside out and honestly sure. every time i i hire someone or bring someone on i do the same thing because that was the best way to learn that's awesome that's awesome so i know and you've um moved up through the ranks you've had um uh promotions and title changes in a good way um and you've uh, uh you you've grown you're not at those same you're not at that bank you're not at the same firm um now you've risen to um vice president of insurance services at people strategy 
Um, you know, the, the key to your success, if you had to say it was one thing um, or two, frankly, what do you think that would be the, the reason that got you from uh, uh, account executive, account manager, producer, all the way? And it's not been that long. It's been less than 10 years, uh, yeah. way up, actually, it's less than a few years up to VP status at various firms. Yeah, you know, honestly, uh, I'm extremely blessed, Eric. Like, there's just no other way to say it. I, my, my mom tends to say that it's because I cleaned up, you know, so much pee and poop in my life that God is probably like, this girl has had enough. Like, maybe, you know, like, let's cut her a break. Um, but I, I really can't say, you know, anything besides that. And, and I just, you know, I really think. I really firmly believe if you do the right thing, Eric, good things will come back to you. I really do firmly believe that. And I've seen it happen in my life time and time again. I've been blessed everywhere I've gone with amazing mentors and people that just really want to see Elsa do what's best for Elsa. Um, and never in a selfish capacity to, you know, just have the company grow or hit a revenue target or anything like that really to develop um me as a as a professional i like that i like that well you know you know one thing i wanted to touch on today if you don't mind is you know i don't um first off i and this is me saying it so i don't want to put words in your mouth but i've been in the insurance employee benefit space personally uh as a full-time career uh for the better part of 23 years and in my years i've met a ton of great people of course just like you i've met a ton of um uh professionals uh, with experience that I've learned from, but by and large, I still find that that in the in the you know, 2022, it is still widely dominated. I, I I steal from Susan Combs, who if you haven't met yet, she's the uh, she was broker of the year in 2017. She's a fantastic person, a friend of mine. But I steal her terminology. I don't know if she coined it, but I learned. I first heard her say it. Our industry is still widely pale, stale, and male. Um, and so in your case, you're not only um, uh, dominating the industry as a female, but even more unique, you're one of very few, in my opinion, Latina or Hispanic heritage um, uh, professionals in our industry. Um, can you maybe talk about um, not only just being female in the industry, but having that Latina background and how that's helped you um, continue to grow in an area that I can't focus on that area. It's just, I, yeah. it's not going to happen. <laughs> I will tell you that too happened in a very interesting way. Um, so in my uh, development of becoming a broker, um, you know, although I was very fortunate to have amazing people um, in my career, you know, I've also had a few folks try to put up roadblocks and, um, sure. you know, I, I literally had someone tell me, you know, you're Latina, you speak Spanish, you should focus on blue collar and, um, you know, just working with your people, you know, legitly, that's what was said to me. And in that moment, I was like, A, B, C, D, no, I'm kidding. How did you not like <laughs> the first rock from the But Oscar. I did say, just leave my office, like legitly right. leave my office because if the real Latina Elsa comes off on you, believe me, this is not going to be good for anybody. Um, my boss tells me all the time, Elsa, never play poker because your face is going to give you away. <laughs> so I was very thankful for the time of mass. Um, but then, you know, I started thinking about it and I was like, this guy's just trying to be a true, you know, a-hole here, but uh, he's right. Like, this is what I should focus on because at the end of the day, what, what is the problem I'm trying to solve here for people? What, what really is it? Right. And, and for me, it then became something about being truly passionate about Hispanics, you know, the minorities, just folks that truly don't understand their benefits, understanding the value behind their benefits. And I experienced it in the clinical setting. You know, folks, unfortunately, when they came to my unit were very, very sick. And they were just like, oh, but I have insurance. Yeah, but your insurance doesn't cover everything. And this is right. what it does and doesn't typically work with the case managers or social workers. And so 
I became a huge advocate to really inform people. And you know what? Sometimes, Eric, it's not just insurance through your employer. Sometimes it's, do you know about insurance you can get through the state for your children? Do you know about insurance you can get through the exchange? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't always have to financially benefit you as a broker. I think a good broker is really just out there trying to solve the huge health crisis that we're having right now in America. Sure. Um, and, and it's nothing new. I mean, it's it's been developing over many, many years. But um, so for, for me, it, it, it was, you know, something that could have been really, really bad, I became super passionate about. And I, and so it, it did kind of become my niche and, and the market that I, you know, tend to focus more on. Um, you know, it's changed a little bit as time has gone on, but definitely for me, it was, it was, you know, I, I saw my mom and dad and so many of these people, right. And I, and I just wondered, like, what seriously like what did my parents think when they were offered benefits like they took it because they knew they had to take it but I don't think they understood you know the ins and outs of in in and out of network and co-pays and you know just paid what they had to pay paid the pharmacy bill that's it you know yeah no I mean you're right and and look I think it's a a, a bigger uh challenge as an industry being um what we do for a living meaning um, yes, there's certainly pockets of communities that are lesser educated on employee benefits and how to do things than others. But I would argue that, and I think you might agree that it doesn't matter your background or your heritage. At the end of the day, insurance is confusing. It's boring. Yeah. Um, it's not something that anybody um, other than us is proud of being an expert at. Yeah. So the reality is, um, I, it does, and again, I don't say that to be offensive. I hope you understand I just see it every day. I don't care if you're uh, quote mm -hmm. unquote rich or poor. I don't care if you're economically sound or not. I've had, and you have too, I've had some of the most affluent, educated people in the yeah. world who have no clue anything about insurance. Copays, deductibles uh, seem easy for us. And it seems kind of basic and table stakes wise, but people just don't get it. So, you know, with that in mind, and particularly you, the focus within your industry, within your market, um, how are you communicating and getting the employees to become more engaged when it comes to understanding and, and, and really taking advantage of their benefits in a good way? Yeah, I mean, I think you, you touched on a great point. Look, benefits is confusing, right? No matter, no matter what, no matter if it's a language barrier, no matter if it's, um, you know, uh, a, a level of, you know, understanding of benefits is almost freaking impossible to the point where even I do it for a living. And there's times where I'm like, why, why am I getting this bill? Like really wrong person to bill for the, for this, right. you, you've, you've targeted the wrong market here. <laughs> um, but you know, for everybody, and I think, again, a good broker is just constantly educating, 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 because we are seeing these things front and center, right? We are seeing the changes that are happening for pharmacy, the changes that are happening, you know, for ERs and urgent cares and things like that. And so every time I do an open enrollment, you know, I'm huge. COVID for me was um, was pretty sad because I love doing open enrollments in person and my clients will tell you that. And it's really just because you can share, you, you can bounce off ideas, even off people. I think when you start talking about, you know, like your good RX or, um, you know, this new thing that uh, Mark Cuban is doing, or, you know, right. you just start talking about these things. People are like, oh yeah, I, I do this. And, you know, instead of going to, you know, the minute clinic, I go, you know, to this pharmacy or, or to this urgent care. And so I really think, um, Sometimes folks are just scared to talk about it. You know, it's like when you, you know, when we were in school and you just didn't want the teacher to like call on you or pick on you. Wait, you that, the was answer. You too? that was yeah, you too? I thought it was just me. All the time, except I was a huge nerd. And so I was like, call on me, please. Oh my goodness. Me. That's um, nerd alert, nerd alert. Yeah, I know. It, it, you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked. Um, but uh, yeah, so same thing but I think once you create a comfortable environment where everybody can just start talking about it and it really feels more like a conversation than 
here's your in and out, in and out of network deductibles. Here's, you know, $50 for this, $75 for this, you know, $5,000 for this. And then the bigger conversation is as these numbers start to climb and they start to get more and more ridiculous is making people aware that, look, Hey, I know these numbers look super scary. I know this is crazy, but if you have a life threatening conditioning uh, condition or life altering event happening to you, please seek medical attention. Right. All of this does not matter. Your life is not worth any of the numbers that I'm showing you on this, you know, PowerPoint presentation. Right. My goal for you is that if, if you ever fall into, you know, a situation where you shouldn't be thinking about the numbers on a sheet of paper, you should really be thinking about saving your life. Um, and so education, I, I, I think for everything, right? It's key. So now when it comes to getting the word out, right, you know, so you're going to set up the, you have the meeting um, with the employees, uh, could be multiple meetings, depending on the account or the locations, that's fine. But how are you getting the word out to the employee population? And I imagine if the uh, employee population is both um, uh, English and Spanish speaking, I imagine you're at least doing it in both languages. But how are you, how are you uh, dispersing that info? Is it just you know, a traditional email blast. And, you know, I just find that not everybody even has or checks email these days. So I'm just curious what you might be doing. Yeah. So, you know, that's actually a great point you bring up. Um, not everybody has email, but I will tell you, everybody has some form of social media. Exactly. And it's crazy that you can have a Facebook account and you don't need an email for it. Right. And so, you know, it's, it's, hard it's hard to do it sometimes with um you know em employers that are just they're just really not familiar with social media and like what's okay and what's not okay but i think it's if you can use that to and leverage that to your advantage do it you know if you have a facebook page if you have a um you know linkedin page even you know tiktok whatever you have right. have your employees follow you there because if they're not going to get the message anywhere else on email or anywhere else, you can make a blast on Facebook and say, don't forget this Friday, open enrollment's happening at, you know, XYZ location, whatever. And you can then create like an event, right? And then when one employee sees it, you know, hopefully they get the word out to the next. But the, the reality is, as brokers, we have to get creative all the time this is just the business we live in, right? We have to continue reinventing the wheel, right? Just all the time. We, we have to figure out new things. I do strongly believe in social media. And I think, you know, although it has, it's like very terrible things, um, you know, been a victim of it with my daughter for mental health reasons, you can also use it to your benefit and, you know, leverage it to get the word out. And I really think it's, Right now, it's the fastest way to educate people. Yeah, I um, I don't, I don't disagree at all, and I've done that myself as well for my client broker partners. In that, uh, and it's always like it catches the employer off guard when they hear it. They're like, "What social media? Are you crazy? Get out of here!" But you know, I I always explain it uh, twofold. In that one, uh, get your employees, of course, to follow or like your page so they get uh, constant updates. But um, your employees may not care if you're updating, you know, that you have a sale going on, but what they do care about is that it's open enrollment time. And um, the pushback I get, and you've probably heard it too, is an employer will say, yeah, but that's client facing, that's customer facing. Why would I want to say that it's open enrollment and we're proud of our benefits? And I just said, well, you just answered your own question because when you have customers searching for whatever widget you sell, are they gonna be quicker to go with a competitor or the company that brags about their benefits and how great the culture is? So it's a double-edged good sword. I don't know if that's a thing, but it's a good thing to be double-edged because one, you get to communicate open enrollment and benefits to your employee staff and, and makeup, but two, you get to tell the world how proud you are of your benefits. So I, I, I love that. And I'm so glad to hear you say that because I tell you what, I have conversations with advisors and brokers every day, all day long. I very rarely have anybody mention what you just mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I look, I agree with you. I think it's especially in the great resignation era that we're living oh, in. Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. Everybody is struggling to hire people. But you are, you know, 
at least I'm going to do it. If I'm, you know, anywhere I'm going to go work, the first thing I'm going to go do is look at their, you know, look at their social media and just or lack see, thereof. <laughs> or, or lack thereof. Yeah. And if, and if it's lack thereof, then we need to have a serious conversation about how that's going to change if I'm going to join your company. But no, that's, but, that's, um, that's gold. I, but, I, I like you know, it. It's just, it, this is real life. You know, this is, this is your culture. This is who you are as an employer. You're comfortable talking to your employees on any platform. You know, it's not just, you're, you're not um, just, st- you know, being stagnant and saying, I'm going to send an email blast, or I'm just going to do the typical, you know, here's a printed, you know, Kinko's, uh, you know, presentation, take it home to your wife and let me know what you want. Yeah. Um, so I agree with you. I think, I think it speaks a lot to, of the organization. No, that's, that's good. No, I think it's huge. And, you know, I'm you, and we don't have to go into every detail, but, you know, we use um, video technology, text messaging. I mean, uh, Slack teams, podcasts, believe it or not, within our employer clients, um, there's just so much out there. You can't necessarily, and you shouldn't do it all at once for a, for a group that's currently on paper that is used to in-person meetings and sending emails because you'll overwhelm them and scare the ever loving, you know, what out of them. However, yeah. Um, I'm a big strategy person. So I, I wonder if you have that similar thought in that, you know, over time, so you can't take them from, uh, from crawl to run, but you can take them from crawl to walk to jog to run. So over the course of three, four, five years as a strategy, you can get them to do more and more for their employees. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's like when I was teaching my parents to text, right? <laughs> It was a challenge, um, but we've achieved it and we have figured out how to do it. And, you know, same thing. It's a, you know, it's a crawl, walk, run, right? And so I think social media for a lot of folks, they're still very nervous about the amount of information that's going to, you know, just be living in the cloud now. Um, but it's okay. I think if we all take baby steps to, to get there, it, it'll be okay. And you know what? And sometimes you can't take a baby step. Sometimes you got to take a really big leap of faith and just trust that it's going to work out. Especially if I'm your broker, I'm telling you it's going to work. If you really solidly believe in me and you're paying me money to do this for you, please just trust me on this one, right? Just trust me on this one. It's going to work. And so, you know, I've had all sorts of conversations. Um, The, I don't want to do this at all ever again. And the let's put every on every platform. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're, you've taken it too far now. No, you're, you're spot on. You're spot on. So um, um, before we wrap up, I don't want to keep it, our listeners too long. Um, these are usually about 25, 30 minutes or so, sometimes more. I know if you're listening, you're like, ah, I've had longer ones. I know, I know. I've had shorter ones as well. But the reality is um, I- I'm super excited to have everybody meet you. Um, how can they uh, reach out? If anybody in the community that uh, listens to my show, uh, it, they're typically in the benefits world. Uh, if they want to reach out, pick your brain, are you open for um, giving, um, uh, I hate to say it, but free advice because they might ask you some opinions and thoughts. Is that anything that you're ever open to? And if so, how can they meet you? Yeah, absolutely. Always open to, um, always open to listening. I won't always have answers, but I will definitely listen. Um, So I think the best way is probably LinkedIn. Um, I'm also, uh, you know, happy to share my email. Um, It's elsa.glorioso. Elsa, yes, like frozen, E-L-S-A and the dot and glorioso, G-L-O-R-I-O-S-O at peoplestrategy.com. So any of those two ways um, you'll reach me and, you know, I try to respond pretty quickly. Well, I tell you what, um, I've never met you until today, and uh, Elsa is not kidding. She is quick to respond on LinkedIn. I um, I did not. It's funny. I'll make fun of myself because we all get, I get it too, Elsa. We all get the LinkedIn message of spam, and people are like, what are you doing? I broke the cardinal rule. Forgive me because I have sinned. I, um, I messaged Elsa, back it up. I messaged Elsa on LinkedIn randomly. And I just got right to the point. And I said, congrats, I need you on the show. And I was so grateful that you didn't delete my message. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, I, uh, I do read them. But uh, to be fair, I'd been, I've, I've been a, uh, a fan. So I'll be a fangirl here for a second. And I've been following you on LinkedIn for a while. And so, oh, thank um, you. you know, also very excited to be here. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I look forward to, um, to seeing you in person. Everybody, 
uh, if you're going to, I hope you're going to the Benefits Pro Broker Expo uh, next month. Well, gosh, we're recording this in April. So uh, next month, 2022 would be May of 2022. Um, I hope you're going to go and uh, watch um, Elsa shine on stage and hopefully take home the highest honor. Right now, she's top five broker of the year finalist. Um, but this, you know, podcasts are evergreen, Elsa. So if uh, you're kind enough to be listening to this in the year 2029, thank you. Um, but uh, Elsa uh, will not be on stage in May of 2029, uh, probably somewhere, but maybe, maybe not Benefits Pro uh, for that specific reason. Anyway, uh, I digress. Thank you again for coming on. Elsa, um, I don't do this all alone. I have a team of rock stars behind me. So for everybody behind the scenes at the Rockstars Rockin' Podcast, I'm Eric Silverman. That, everybody, to remind you, is Elsa Glorioso, top five broker of the year finalist, Benefits Pro Magazine. Thank you to Benefits Pro, Paul Wilson, my good friend. And uh, uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Rockstars Rocking Podcast. If you haven't done so already, make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you consume podcasts. And if you feel so inclined, please leave us a review five stars would totally rock until next time rock stars keep rocking